Hello world, welcome back to another video. I'm Mr. G and today I want to talk about a topic that not many new coders think about when they're first starting. Uh, and the reason for that is that most most new coders, usually they drop the sprite where they want it to be and then they start adding code uh, instead of thinking what's going to happen when the green flag is clicked. Because maybe 99% of your projects or your sprites are going to start when the green flag is clicked. So if we go over to the events palette and bring over when green flag is clicked, we should be thinking about where we want our sprite to start every single time that we start this program. So some, some of you may notice that when you run your project a bunch of times, the sprite ends up you know finishing, let's say at the top right, but always starting at the bottom left, and you have to click and drag the sprite to go where you want it to be. So what you should do is create a, a block that kind of like sets your program up right at the start with everything you want in the places that you want and the settings that you want. And so what I mean by that is that let's say we want our sprite to always start here at the bottom, the bottom left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them to the bottom left and I'm going to bring over a go to block when the green flag is clicked. So now every time I start my project, no matter where the sprite ends up, when I click on the green flag, the sprite goes right back to the beginning. So that is the first tip I want to give to you. And make sure that you use that for almost every sprite. The next tip I want to give you is to make sure that you show or you, or you hide your sprite right at the start. So down here in the looks palette, there are these show and hide blocks. I'll link another video that I created up in the card above. Um, but you want to make sure that your sprite, like let's say for example, when you finish the project, it ends up disappearing. You want to make sure that you show it at the right time. So if you want your sprite to show up at the correct moment, I would have the show block right after the go to block. So that every time you click on the green flag, the sprite shows up as it should. And it's just a good practice to, to get into, to make sure that everyone knows that your sprite should show up right at the beginning. Or you may have a sprite, let's say, let me create another sprite. So you may have a sprite, let's take this, uh, let's take this bear right here. This bear, we want to make sure that when we start the project, he doesn't show up. So what I could do is go to the events palette. I want to make sure that my sprite goes to the, let's say the bottom right. So I'm going to drag him there, just like I did for the cat sprite. And I want to make sure that when the project starts, this bear is hidden, so he doesn't show up. Maybe what I'll do is he'll show up after five seconds. So I'm going to add a wait block here. And after five seconds, then he shows. So now when I start my project, you'll see the bear disappears. The, the cat sprite is there because we do have the show block. And after a few seconds, the bear does reappear. And every single time I run my project, this is how it will work. Now, normally you don't really want to time your blocks to show up like, like this. Uh, you might want to use a different event or a broadcast block, but I'm just showing you this as an example. The next thing I want to talk about is point and direction. Some of you will have sprites that are aimed in a specific position or in a specific direction. So you want to make sure that if you want your sprite to be, let's say, facing the right or pointing towards the right, you also have the point and direction block in your script. You might even want to have that before the show so that your sprite is facing the right place. Let me just show you. Let's say, for example, I want the cat to be facing up. So I'm going to point in direction to zero and then show up. So now when I click on the green flag, the sprite shows up at the bottom left and he's facing up. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to have him facing the right, to the right. So I'm just going to set it right back to 90. And now when the project starts, the cat is always facing uh, towards the right. So this block can come in handy if you're using any turn blocks later on in your project. So if you have other scripts where you have the, the character turn position, maybe based on the arrow key press, uh, you might want to add a point and direction block at the start of your project in the script that starts your project. The next tip I want to give is what you should do if you want your sprite to appear to be a certain size when the project first starts. So if we go back to our looks palette, we'll see that there's a set size to percentage block. And so let's say, for example, I want my sprite, my cat sprite to be small right at the beginning of the project. So instead of being 100%, maybe we want it to be 35%. So once again, I'm going to put that in front of the show block. 
The reason I'm putting it before the show block is because I want to do all of these things just before I show the sprite. So if I set size to 35% and we click on the green flag, you'll see that the cat is much smaller, but that might be how I want it to be in this project. But you might notice that if you import um, a sprite or a costume for a sprite or you draw your own, sometimes they come out to be really big. And so you want to set the size to the correct um, percentage at the start. The next thing uh, I want to mention is that you should probably select, especially if you're manipulating sprites with costumes, you should probably select which costume it should show up as in the beginning. So let's say, for example, my cat should be in costume one right at the start. I'm going to select and I'm going to explicitly state what costume it should be right at the start. So all of this, once again, before the show block. So now every time I start the project, my cat goes to the bottom left. It's this small size. All of the settings are the way that I want them to be. So I've been repeating myself saying that all of this should happen before the show block. And the reason for that is if my sprite disappears at the end of all of the scripts, maybe at the end of the project, when I click on the green flag, it's supposed to reappear. I want all of this to occur just before it reappears. Now the last tip I want to give is what you should do with the backdrop because a lot of you will have different backdrops or bit different scenes in your projects. And while I could control the backdrop from the sprite, I actually like to go here down in the bottom right and select the stage. And let's just add a backdrop so I could show you what I mean. So we're going to add the bench and we're going to add the boardwalk. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that, that I initialize the, the backdrop correctly. So in my events palette, I want to make sure that when the green flag is clicked in the looks palette, I'm going to bring over switch backdrop to, and then I'm going to switch over to, let's say the bench with the view. So every time I click on the green flag, the, the backdrop will be the bench with the view. And then later on in the project, at some point, the, uh, the backdrop will switch to something else. But every time I start the project, we have this bench with a view. Um, so I would recommend making sure you control your backdrops within the backdrops programming area, the scripting area. Uh, I don't really like to control the backdrop with sprites. Um, but as you can see, you know, right now I have the sprite selected, the sprite one selected. I could, I could control the backdrop switch here, like right here at the top but I really don't recommend doing that. I would, I would recommend adding the code in the stage. So going down here to the bottom right, selecting it and making sure that you're putting all of that code for the backdrop, keeping it right here. And the reason for that is that, let's say you have like, you know, 10 sprites and each sprite is controlling the backdrop. You're gonna set yourself up for bugs and, um, and having issues in the future where, you know, maybe two sprites are trying to change the backdrop at the same time and you're not sure why one's showing up and the other one isn't. So I like to just keep everything for the backdrops in the backdrops or staging area. And just in case you didn't know, you don't have to put all of your code on this when green flag is clicked script. You can create multiple scripts that run in parallel. So when the green flag is clicked, you can just bring in a whole bunch of these events and have different things happen at the same time when the green flag is clicked. So you don't have to put everything in one, sp in one script, uh, which is something that I sometimes see students do when they first uh, start learning Scratch. They don't realize that you can run things in parallel in Scratch. So I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments down below, and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. If you learned something new, I'd also appreciate it if you give the video a like or a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you could catch the next video when it comes out. I will see you next time.